Okay, so let's get started then. So um, what I want to try and do with this drawing is not only us have a bit of an exercise over the next couple of weeks for um, watercolour, but also to just go back to basics a little bit and um, revisit some drawing principles, measuring principles, scaling, that kind of thing, how we actually get something from there to here um, with, you know, relative success because obviously that could be a very frustrating part of the whole process and that's why you end up or a lot of people end up just tracing um, but when you just trace you are very limited in what you can what you can do with your reference so obviously learning how to draw is is, is a very very good skill to have not only does it help you with seeing things a bit better but also it helps with the painting process um, which is not always so evident in the first stage <clears throat> So what we're going to do, first of all, is on my reference on the left hand side here, obviously, of our line um, is kind of a square format and my paper is a square format. And what I've done is I've drawn two lines. One is a, um, a, a vertical line and one is a horizontal line. Now, these two lines can pretty much go anywhere through the reference. You know, you could have one up the top here, you could have one there. You don't even have to have them at all. You could use the edge of the paper if you wanted to. You just have to remember where you're measuring from. Okay, so just by having these two lines, they're just points of reference. And all I've done is I've just transferred those two lines onto my paper. Now you're going to say, well, where do I put those two lines? And this is where you put the two lines. This is how you figure it out. <clears throat> so what I do, first of all, is I measure the full width of the image that I want to have on my paper. So i.e. I want to have a, you know, the, this whole part of the line on my paper. So if I just did that, see how small it would be. So I use the scaling dividers. I take that measurement and then I go onto my paper with the other end. OK, now you can see that that's going to make it that big. So instead of being the size it was, which is only that big. Now it becomes this size. OK, and what I do is I make two little marks, one on the edge of the paper that side one on the edge of the paper this side. Okay, so that's gonna be that width scaled up to the new size. <clears throat> the second measurement I do is the full height of what it is that I wanna get into my picture. So if I only wanted to concentrate on the face, I could just do that. But I wanna have all the main and um, uh, for when we do the painting next week. So I'm gonna take a measurement from the top to the bottom and then I transfer that onto my paper. And again, I make another two marks, top and bottom. So that gives me <clears throat> the full extremity of that image that's going to appear on my paper. Now, to find this line, what I do is I measure in from one of these external measurements. OK, remember, we put these two points there. So I'm going to measure from one of those points in to where the line is on here. So from the edge of the hair to the line, OK, and then I transfer that across. And then I draw my line down. So that gives me where that line is in proportion to where that line is. OK, so let me just say that again. So once you've done your full measurements, so that's that width, that height, you then measure in from one of the sides, doesn't matter which side. So from that side to that side, for example, transfer that measurement onto your board, make a mark, draw a vertical line down. OK, that gives me my vertical line. The horizontal line I do in exactly the same way, except I measure down from the top or the bottom, whichever you decide. Doesn't matter. So I measure, make a mark, draw a horizontal line. OK, the only thing you need to make sure is that that's plumb upright and that's horizontal. <clears throat> so it's not going at an angle and that's not too wonky. All right. One way you can do that is you can just measure in from the edge of the page here make a mark, measure in from the edge of the page there, make a mark as long as it's the same distance as that, and then just draw between the two. Same at the bottom. OK, so that's how you get the basic structure of those two marks. <clears throat> now you may be wondering why that's important. Oops, sorry, I just hit the mic because it's over my head. Um, it's important because obviously that's giving us our foundation. It's almost like a, uh, uh, if you're building a building, it's like the, the, the bit that you're going to build off of. So if this isn't right, then obviously when we start to put all the measurements on, that's all going to go a bit pear-shaped as well. So let's make a start on the actual drawing. 
So what I'm going to do is um, see this line I kind of brought down horizontal. I've kind of crossed it through the um, a couple of points of re reference. So one is the corner of his mouth, just down here, and the other one is almost the corner of his eye. So it's hitting two points on on the lion's face that are of, of interest to us. If I'd have brought the line down, say through here, there's not really anything on there through the main of any interest. So when we go to actually draw it on our, um, on our paper, we then got to find the points of interest a bit more, um, with a bit more difficulty. So by having the line cut through some of those points of interest, it makes it a bit easier to find them. So saying that, what I can do is I can actually start to measure up from my horizontal line to where the start of the, um, I'm not quite sure what you call it, but it looks like the, um, black mark that goes around this right eye starts. I can then, so using the small end on my reference, big end on my work, I can then measure up on that line and that's where the start of that black point comes. Okay, so I've just measured from there to there and that's where that comes. What I can do then is I could, for example, just to, so we can start to figure out where this eye is, take a line off there, so that's coming up at that angle, and I could check that again. And then we roughly know that the eye is starting across there. Okay, so that's almost like doing that, putting a line across that, so. <clears throat> but what I don't know is how far in the eye comes. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna measure from my center line out to the very edge of his eye, and then I'm going to mark a line, uh, mark a spot out here. So the edge of his eye is going to come to about there. So I'm just going to make that mark a little bit darker so it, it shows up clearer on the um, on the screen. So we know his right eye is going to be in this area here somewhere. Okay, I'm not just going to draw it just yet. I'm just going to um, place some marks for the moment, and then we'll start to rough in the actual drawing itself. So what I'm going to do now is try and find where the other eye in relation to this right eye comes. So we're going to measure across this left eye. Okay. So I'm going to take my scaling divider, remembering to use the small end on the reference, big end on your work. So I measure across the bridge of his um, muzzle to the other eye. And then I take that measurement and then I mark it onto my paper just there. Okay, next thing I'm gonna do is measure up from the bottom line, so this line, to the dark mark. Take that measurement and put it on my work. So that is where theoretically that eye starts or that black mark of that eye starts. Now, don't always trust these 100% because there are some variations in the distance between um, when you look at them, because this one's not actually touching, <coughs> touching the paper. So what I like to do as well is just check again, come across the two and just make sure that they pretty much line up, which they do there. Okay, so what I'm doing is just doing a, an imaginary line across the two dark points that I've just figured out to see that they are lining up properly, okay? Once we've done that, okay, so we know that that's the start of the black mark, which is this bit here. I'm then going to figure out where the edge of his eye is. So like we did on this eye, I'm going to measure the outside of that eye. It's the same process, take the small end of the scaling dividers and I measure out to the edge, measure out to the edge, and that's now the edge of the eye. And if you want to double check it, what you can do is you can measure from there, to there to make sure you are in proportion. So you measure from there to there, just to double check. And then theoretically, they should be roughly the same. Okay, so that gives us the proportion scaled up of those eyes compared to those eyes. So now what we can do is we can actually then start to look at um, putting in some of the structure of these eyes and then looking at the shape of the head around it. 
So I'm not actually going to put any of the, um, the nose and the mouth or the chin or anything in just yet. I'm going to sort of start to work out in a spiral fashion from these measurements that we've just already worked out. So the first thing I'm going to do is figure out where this gray edge of his hairline is, because that gives me another distance, which is really useful, because then I can start to look to find the shape, this shape of the, of the, um, of the, the head in this area. OK. So let's measure from there out to the edge. I turn it over and it's going to be pretty close to the, um, the existing measurement because there's not a lot of distance between the edge of the eye and that gray area. As you can see, it's very short. So that's quite a close measurement. OK. Uh, I think what I need to do now is figure out where the top of this left eye is before I start to look at drawing this contour around his face. So let's just do that. Let's find the top of the eye. Come back to our drawing. So it's quite high up, higher than I thought it was. I thought it was going to be lower, but that's why we measure. So that now, that mark there relates to this mark at the top of his eye, which is there. Okay. And if we really want to, we could then actually measure, let's just do that while we're at it. So it should be roughly the same. It's a little bit, a tiny bit higher on this right hand side, not much, just a tiny bit. And that then comes in there. So that then is this right eye top, left eye top. <clears throat> and if I really want to, let's just do it with a ruler because it's easier to see them clean that off so it's not too dirty. So I could take a line like so across the two eyes, come to my work, and then they should be pretty much the same, which they are. Okay. So then, I'll give you a moment just to, to have a go at getting some of those measurements in before I start to um, look at getting the contour of the face in. Stuart, what about if you haven't got those calipers or whatever you call them? <laughs> okay, so you can just use, um, do you have a pair of scissors there? So if you don't have um, scaling dividers and you're doing it, so you can use a pair of scissors actually as the, for the same size. So you keep this, you're not making it bigger, you keep it at the same size from there to here. And what you could do is you take a pair of scissors Obviously, if you've got some quite long scissors is, is a bit more useful. And then you can do all your measurements with the scissors. OK, so you do your line like so, you go across and then you make your mark. But it will be the same size, the same size. You won't be going bigger. All right. If you want to go bigger, the easiest way is to use these. Otherwise, you've got to start thinking about, well, OK, if I want to go two times bigger, then I've got to go like that. And then I've got to go like that. And it gets all starts to get very, very. Um, very difficult and awkward uh, and that's where a lot of mistakes coming and then your drawing kind of goes a bit skew with um, the other the other option for going bigger is just make this bigger blow it up on a photocopier if you did want to um, if you don't have scaling dividers then make your reference bigger so it matches the size of the paper that you're going to be working on um, and then you can just again use like for like measurements so you measure from there straight across Okay, and that just makes things a lot, lot easier than trying to guess 1.2 times bigger than this and so on and so forth. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is start to look for um, this sort of V shape in the, um, in the forehead. And then from that, I'm going to start to then draw, as we said, the outline of the, uh, the face. So first things first is let's measure across to see where that shape kind of comes in. And I'm going to make a little mark there. I'm going to find how high up it comes. So again, just measuring up from the plumb line at the bottom, or the horizontal one. And I'm just guessing, because obviously it's, it's hair. It's, it's not an exact point. It's just giving me an idea of where, roughly where it comes in. And I'm going to measure that up. Oh, that was a good guess. Look at that. Pretty much in the spot it needs to be. 
So that is where that piece of hair is kind of coming. And if we look, it sort of goes up like so. So it creates this sort of V shape. So I'm going to put a line there, not too hard, because obviously it's just a what's called a construction line. And I'm going to have a V kind of here. Now I need to see how high up it goes. So I'm going to measure up to that gray spot on his face. And that's not far off, so it starts about there. So what I've done there is I've measured to that point there. And let's just measure out just to make sure we are roughly in the right place. And there we go, we're roughly in the right spot. So then I know I can start to draw, and this is where the drawing comes in now. We can start to look at getting this um, shape of the head actually drawn in. So we're actually drawing some of the face now. Big, big moment. Okay, so we measure out from the plumb line just to see where that changing angle comes. I don't know if you can see, but it changes angles. So it goes downhill, then it goes out. So there's two changes in angle there. So it goes downhill and then it goes out. And then from that point, which is where I've just measured, so which is to there. So it needs to come a bit wider. So if we look, that actually comes pretty much through the center of that eye. So here's our eye. We're coming through almost the center. So that's where we need to come from. And then the change in angle again. So then we're coming very steep. Just make sure we get that roughly in the right place. So then look, we come up and then that joins up. If you remember earlier, we measured to this point already. So it kind of makes this um, little triangle in this area just above the eye. So we come out and then we come in. And then it meets the existing mark that we've already made. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is find the outside edge of that contour where the, um, the edge of the main part of the main is coming. <laughs> the main part of the main, that doesn't make sense, but never mind. Um, so what I'm gonna do, because we've already figured out where the top of the eye is, I can actually use that measurement or I can use that judging point to find where this part of the hair is. So if you look, there's the top of our eye. I'm actually gonna measure from there across the top of the eye to the outside part of the hair, okay? So that I can, um, when I put it on my drawing, because I know where that point is, because we've already measured it, which is here. When I measure across, I just need to make sure that that measurement lines up with that. And then we know we're getting that in the right place. So there's the outside of the hair. Let's turn it around. So I'm looking across here to that point to see where it lines up, obviously with the top of the eye. So that then becomes the outside piece of this hair. Now we're not gonna do every single hair, but what I'm looking for is the basic shape. So the basic shape that this hair is going in. And I'm gonna simplify it, obviously. And we're kind of coming in because obviously this is all gonna be taken care of with paint. Um, so we've got a line there and then this line of the hair kind of comes out and then up. And then we're coming out here. So we're sort of looking at this abstract shape there is what I'm sort of trying to not exactly replicate, but give the impression of and this piece needs to come out further because remember we just measured to there. So if I go up, look how much further out it goes. So there's our measurement. So we need to come out further than that point. <clears throat> so this is what training the eye is all about. It's about judging where something is in relation to A to B, 
B to C, but then also what shape and where in relation to other things does that point actually come? And then obviously then when you're drawing the shapes, you try and replicate um, as best you can or mimic as best you can the, the basic shape that you're seeing. Okay, so I'm gonna ignore all of these internal shapes at the moment. We're just gonna come up. This is just the edge of the hair I'm looking at now. Let's just make sure we're roughly in the right place. Now we don't know exactly where this point is, so I'm just guessing. And look at that, wow, I'm way out. So something's gone wrong there, so let's have a look. And this is why you need to check sometimes. So that must mean that this point might be in the wrong place. Let's have a look. Nope, that's about right. So it's just the illusion of the, the, the way that the hair is going. I thought it was coming in more, but it's obviously not. So let's take that all the way up and then it kind of goes out of the picture. And remember, this is our mark from earlier, which is the top of the top of the main, very top of the main. And then that sort of comes around. How far over does it go? Let's have a look. Um, let's take a measurement from across this eye because we already know where that is. It's always good to try and take a measurement from somewhere that you already know or you've already figured out on your drawing. Um, let's go actually to the darkest part of the main. That's probably better. So the darkest part of the main comes all the way, look all the way over here. It's amazing how far over it is. So then we come up, yep, which is this bit here. So I'm sort of going up the edge, that's where I'm looking. And now I wanna see where it starts to curve over. So you see, this is more of a vertical line, then it starts to slope over. So let's have a look. So let's try and find the point of his back. That's the back of the line there. So I'm gonna measure up from my horizontal line. So I measure up somewhere here. So it's, I'm guessing at the moment where this comes in. So that's this measurement from there to there. Now I'm gonna measure from there to there to see where it comes across ways. So yeah, we're not too far off. Look at that, that was a good guess. So that's his back, which is coming up and then out of the picture. So then our main here needs to cross through that point. So this is where we need to be curving over. So I'm gonna do it as a straight line just to start off with. It's a bit easier. And then we're curving and curving and then coming all the way up and then into where the, um, the brown hair then takes over. Okay, so let's now find where this sort of inner band of the browner hair comes inside that sort of darker blacker hair. And again, it's guessing because obviously um, it's not an exact edge. There's, there's hairs overlapping here. So we're just judging roughly where the change in color comes. So I'm measuring from the eye again across to where the um the, the lighter brown hair or the burnt sienna sort of come color comes and again it sort of comes up so looking at the shape it's sort of doing that it's going across it's going across and then it already goes up and then into the main part of the main like so uh, and it comes down before it starts to change direction. Let's see where that comes to. So let's see where that point is. So I'm gonna measure out and we're below the eye, about the eye, where the dark part of the eye is. So that's from here. Let's measure up. And that's pretty much, pretty much where we need to be. So this is where the change in angle comes for that lighter brown color, where we then start to turn the corner and we then come down the hill. 
what I can do then is figure out where that thing intersects the line. So let's do that. So we look to the line here and oh, getting a little bit wide and then that sort of comes down to about there. Okay, so let me hold fire and let you catch up on that. <laughs> So I think what we need to do now is we need to kind of figure out this side of his face because we sort of figured out what's going on roughly in this area, but we don't really know what's going on in this area yet. So there's no point even making a stab at this because we've not built the structure for this yet. So let's do this side next. So what I'm going to do is measure out across the eye. Let's go from the black spots mm -hmm. we've already got and measure out to the gray area on the side of his face and we can take that measurement oops let's just put my rubber down take that measurement and just make a little mark and then if we look it kind of goes up like so so let's just make a line up there which is sort of that line there and then it changes angle again. So it's these angle changes we need to be looking for. So let's figure out roughly where that angle comes in. And it's only rough, you know, you're guessing. And this is where the, um, the artistic ability sort of comes in because all of this is just guessing. We're, we're sort of trying to figure these things out as we go. Um, and like I was just saying there about the photorealism, if, if you want to make it really accurate, then you have to, you know, spend more time being more precise. But if you want it to be a bit more uh, expressive and a little bit looser, then you can um, let go of some of that detail and and uh, and just let the marks make the uh, some of the um, some of the uh, you know the image up rather than um, having to make every single hair and whatnot. And that's just down personal choice. Let's maybe take that out, I went a bit wrong there. Um, so then we got this line <coughs> that's coming. Let's just double check that because that looks a bit high. That's about right. So this line, if you see here, goes across towards our center line. <coughs> and then we got another change in angle, which then comes up and into the triangular bit of our hair, which is sort of coming down like so. So you see it kind of comes up and then goes across. Now, this is a good good um, uh, exercise in, in looking for space shapes and shapes within the face. So if I look at the, the gray part of the hair that's being formed against the line, so what I'm talking about is just that sort of shape there. And I look at my shape, okay, here, mine feels a bit wide to where the hair starts. So I'm just gonna double check that. And it could be because we're scaling it up. So sometimes it's a bit of an optical illusion, but other times, yeah, it's wrong, which it is at the moment. So I need to come up, <laughs> excuse me, I need to come up. So this triangle, needs to come in more and this is what I'm saying about it's all about just guesswork so you make a stab you make a guess and then you come back later on and you you um, tweak it or you can adjust it slightly um, in relation to the other marks that you've made now this line doesn't feel right now so we've got a change in angle a change in angle there which comes out and then down so confident and that's in the right place so let's just have a look yeah sometimes you do have to double check so it is actually higher than i thought and then it comes down there okay let's not fiddle with that too much so now we've got the gray part of the hair, which comes down to about here, okay, which is about there. And then it kind of comes out 
and then it comes back in. So it sort of makes that triangular shape here. So let's have a stab at where that comes out to. So coming out from the center and we're coming up from the bottom. So we need to get a lot, lot higher there. So the line is coming down and then sort of out. So actually it turns the other way. So that actually needs to turn the other way. It's a concave line, which means it curves that way instead of being convex, i.e. curving inwards. And then this one then, look, it bows, a bit like a sail, coming back in this way. And then let's just check to see how far that comes in. So it needs to come into about there. Okay. And then I need to measure up just from the bottom, just to see roughly where we're at with that edge, oh, the end point. Too far off, come down a little bit lower. Now that we're at this point, what we can start to do is look to get this shape in, which is the muzzle that comes, protrudes forwards from the face. So I'm going to start from measuring from here. So let's just double check we're in the right spot. So it needs to come in a bit. So if I look up, we're just on the outside of the eye, just on the outside of the eye. Yep, so we need to come in a bit with that mark. So that comes in and then we start to curve up and over. And then if you look, it comes all the way down to about here, that line, and it's going over like that. So we end up with that sort of um, line there. So it's not that down a bit. Okay, now we've kind of come down to this point. We're at the corner of the mouth now. So here's the corner of the mouth. So we can then actually start to look at getting that shape in. And that shape comes up this way. So what I like to do is if you're doing an angle, is do that, guess the mark, and then come back and then double check it to make sure it is roughly in the right place or in the right um, height or angle. So let's now figure out where the center of his mouth is. So we can measure out from the center line, coming to here, so I'm way too far over. And let's measure up. Now with these, these dividers, they're not, as soon as you start to get into um, small measurements like this, they pretty much become unusable purely because yeah, that again. Uh, they, yeah they're, because of the the way that they're designed they're too fat to be able to get the two points at the same um uh ag against the paper at the same time to have more accurate ones you can get them where they're where they you know when you measure a small small distance like that the two points are actually on the paper whereas here one point's on the paper and the other point's sort of towards your eye more which it it, it creates an optical illusion when you're looking through it, especially if you look at it slightly from an angle where they become very un inaccurate. So you have to kind of just start to guess a little bit and use your judgment um, based on all the other measurements that we've sort of done as to whether things are in the right place or not. Um, one way can we can sort of check that is if we measure from here across to this side of the mouth, because it's a triangle, look, if I measure from there across to the other side of the mouth, which is about there, I can then look to see if that angle there matches this angle here. And it does. So we know then that that point's in the right place. 
if that angle sort of went up here somewhere, then we'd know that this point was 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 very wrong. Or it, if the, the angle went down here somewhere, then we'd know that point was too high. But because the line, that angle and that angle are roughly the same, we know that that point's good. Okay. We've now got the left-hand side of the, the mouth in, or the mouth line, I should say. So we look there, it's roughly right. So then we can get this, start to get this um, curved area in, because we've sort of figured out where it needs to come across. So let's just have a look about the widest point. And the widest point comes about there. So then we can actually start to just roughly guess just by looking and judging where we think this comes in. Um, that comes a bit straighter there, I think. But now we don't know how high that comes, so let's measure up to where the top of the nose is, or the nose line, I should say. So we can measure like so. That gives us that top um, extremity of, of this line here. Now, his face is not 100% straight on. He's slightly three quarters. Now, whenever you get a slight twist in any, in any face, whether it's a human face, an animal face, doesn't matter, perspective starts to become um, into play. And generally what will happen is, um, because it's like a box, one side is gonna to start to go higher than the other side. And if we look at this face, very, very marginally, the right eye is higher than the left eye. The right side of the nostril is higher than the left side of the nostril. And the right side of the mouth is only very, very marginally higher than the left side of the mouth. So everything on this side of the face is slightly higher than everything on this side of the face. Not much, I grant you, it's only probably about a millimeter, <clears throat> but it's enough to give the impression that the face is turned away from us. Okay, because this is becoming closer, this is going further away. Only very slightly, but it's enough. So what does that mean? So that means then that when we put this side of the nose in, it has to be slightly higher, only marginally, than this side of the nose. Otherwise, you're not going to get that, that, that twisting effect. It's, if you were to make them completely, everything completely parallel, i.e. that same height, that same height, that same height, that same height, what will happen is instead of giving it a turn, you're going to draw it so that it's looking directly straight on when it's not. It's kind of looking over to the corner here. So we just need to be a little bit careful that we get that um, that we get that in right. So let's have a look. So let's measure up on this nostril. So this nostril comes to about there. And let's measure up from this nostril or the edge of the, um, the nostril, <coughs> which comes to about there. And it is just marginally, <coughs> marginally lower not massively, just a little bit. So this one, if I look at that space shape in there, it's very short. So I think I need to come in a little bit to start this nose off. So it comes down. So you see here we've got an angle that goes down the hill. Then we come in. And we don't know where we're going into yet, so let's measure across. And let's measure up. So we're coming up to about there. So this is where the angle of this nose is coming into. And then we get this little triangle. So there's like a little triangle just at the bottom of the nose. So if we were to take a line across there, we get this sort of little triangle shape. And that line is not vertical, it's going the top side of it is more to the left than the bottom side of it. So let's do that little line up first. So it kind of comes like, like so, where this line side is more leaning, more leaning like that than it is like that. And then above that, we get this little triangle shape. 
let's just measure up, see how high that should come. Might be a bit high there. I don't know, we're about right. Um, so we get this little triangle, remembering obviously that this side is lower than the other side. And we can continue that all the way out. There's a little break there, and then it comes back. And then that's the side of the nostril on the left. Like a little slither of dark when we come to paint it. Sort of comes up the hill. Now I've gone wrong somewhere, so let's have a look. Because the top of the nose, maybe I didn't measure that right first time. Yeah, so the top of the nose is about here. So it's only a little, um, a little curve. Kind of comes down the hill, then it goes back up the hill, then it goes down the hill again. Now, why does it do that? So basically, we're expressing the fact that this has got a change in surface. So this goes across. Then it goes down because we're going into a plane that's going down the side, either side. If you were to just draw a straight line across there, it wouldn't give us a sense of the form that's going on in the muzzle. And then when we come to paint it, it will look flat. So you want to just be aware that there are some changes in angle going on um, around the nose. So let's just double check this edge. I think I might be a bit far out. <clears throat> no, how's that right then? So let's check the side of the nose. Mm, okay, so it's going on there. Measure that very well. I think my nose needs to come out a bit more. Didn't measure that very well. So coming in and then down. Not much, just a little bit more. Otherwise the, um, it'll be out of proportion with the rest of the face if we're not careful. So then that comes down and then across. Okay, and then the edge of the muzzle, the, the round bit of the, the um, where the whiskers come out stops at about that point. Okay, where it then then turns into um, a curve, although we're not going to draw it as a curve, where it starts to go back out and then form the the sort of the eye socket area. So this area here is what I'm talking about. So that area in there. There's a lot of shape in there. So let's come down from our original part that we'd already drawn. So we're coming down at an angle like that. And then how far down does that come? Let's have a look. So that comes down to about there. And then we actually go out quite a long way before we cut back in like a little V shape and then it comes down to the nose which is there and then the outer part of the eye has a shape that comes down and then it curves in and then down so you get this sort of S shape on the side there might be a bit high, let's come down a little bit more. Okay. Inside that, we then need to look at this angle. So there's an angle cutting through, through the nose here, which then starts us off on the area where we can bring the, the eye in. I'm not going to draw that right the way across because it doesn't go right the way across. This starts to give us some information about the muzzle so that the muzzle can kind of um, come forwards. Now let's look to get the um, eye in. 
and then we'll stop and I'll give you another break just to catch up on, on that. So the eye goes uphill. And then it starts to curve over. Comes all the way out. Let's just find where this edge is, the height of this. About there. The corn, edge corner comes up. So it comes in and then it comes down and around the dark part of the eye. So it comes back and then that joins that loop. This what comes in there. And then there's a white bit underneath this eye that comes down. And then the shape of it goes down and then it's into that under part of the dark part of the eye. And it sort of joins up with that dark piece that's here. We then get a lighter brown patch. Sort of goes up towards the mohawk or whatever you want to call that triangle shape. <clears throat> Comes all the way down. And this is then a darker brown part. Inside the eye, because obviously this is where a lot of the attention is. Let's have a look to see where that very, very dark center comes. That really helps to focus the eyes. So the dark center is going to come in here. Obviously, we don't want to draw it too dark just yet. But the if I'm looking at what I'm looking at is where does the dark shape intersect the sort of pupil? Um, and that comes sort of up over. And then it comes into this edge because that's where the brow line is. It sort of comes down. Very soft. So this will be a very soft wash. And then around somewhere like that. <laughs> Don't want to overdraw this because a lot of this is going to be done with paint. And there'll be a little highlight. I'll put a little highlight just in up there at the top. So um, I'm assuming that's all good then. Let's get the right hand eye in and then we can start to move on and finesse some of the details afterwards. So looking at the shape of this right hand eye, I'll stop the board wobbling a little bit. I need to come out from this mark, which was that dark mark that we put there right at the beginning. It comes up and then we go up the board staying very close to the line. And this is the top of the eye. So then it starts to crest over. Comes all the way over. And let's just see where it comes into. So let's find the, um, this point. <clears throat> so that's there. Uh, let's measure up. which comes about there. So that's then that darker part of the, uh, sorry, the edge of that darker part of the eye. So let's just knock some of these marks down. It comes down and then we're into the under part of the eye. Sort of follows up, 
turns in. So let's look at the left eye just to sort of compare where the dark should turn in. So it comes across and sort of down like so. And then the pupil is going to be, let's just figure out where the dark part of the pupil is. So again, this is a very short move measurement so it's not so accurate to give me a rough idea about where it comes so I don't make him look too cross-eyed and then we've got our highlight let's put it on the same side of the eye it's going to come in there and then looking at the shape that the shadow is making over the top of the eye there's sort of a shadow coming across Cross like so, which turns down sort of a not exactly round, it's sort of more of an oval, oval type shape within that darker mass. Um, and even inside the darker mass, there's another shape that sort of comes down. There's a shape within a shape there, really. Okay, maybe it comes up a little bit higher there. So then underneath the eye, we've got a line of sorts <clears throat> that will come all the way down pretty much to the upright line that we've got. And then looking out to the right, to where the mane meets the browner part of the mane, there's a bit more shape that we can extract here, like another triangle type shape there. So I can rub that out. That's where the longer hairs are going to come. <clears throat> and actually this can come in a little bit as well. Okay, now let's just make sure the nose is right. That could be a touch longer, that could be a touch shorter, just a little bit of adjustment. And then we've got these, there's a brown shape that kind of goes across the nose or the, the jawline, not jawline, the um, muzzle. So if we look here, there's a line that kind of comes down between the eyes. So it comes off of the the darker part of the mane up the top here. It comes down slightly, down the hill, and then it goes in and along, making sure that the gap on this side to that eye is shorter than the gap on this side to this eye. Because again, we're trying to create the illusion of the um the turn in the head so then this dark part changes direction so look where that the this part of the um dark is so we come across so then we get a change in direction there <clears throat> and then that goes over and then downhill because this is the far side of his muzzle so it comes all the way down almost to the nose and then out into the bit where the whiskers are. Um, and we can even continue this shape all the way up and then it goes into um, the top side of his eye where it meets that browner mark. 
for those shapes in there. <coughs> Clean up a little bit. And then on the right hand side, we've got another shape that comes off of the top of this eye, sort of bows round. Comes down back towards the, the dark bit. Goes over. And then that comes all the way down and towards the nostril where it then goes back out and then in and then out and then it sort of wiggles its way back up the face towards the longer hairs that then go out towards the brown. <clears throat> Let's just get a little bit of that shape in there. And a bit over the eye. So we've got, like we do on this side, we have another sort of oval brown shape on this side. And it sort of comes back round and then we don't really have eyebrows as such. We've got some slightly longer hairs. <clears throat> kind of come down. And then there's another shape. Sort of in there somewhere. <coughs> and then we'll get the right hand side of the muzzle in. So that comes over. And if we look, look at this lighter patch that we've got in there. So let's try and replicate that a little bit. comes back towards the nose, up, and then it sort of crests over on the right hand side. And then it's dark and light. Okay. <clears throat> and we end up with this sort of darker patch just across the top of the nose there. <clears throat> this is all hair, whiskers. It's come down to the lower part of the mouth. <clears throat> so this is long whiskers. Let's see how far down it comes. So we'll measure down. So the depth of the whiskers comes to about here. Just do a little jaggedy, jaggedy line coming across. And then we go back uphill towards where we were <clears throat> in the corner of the mouth. There's a little sort of triangular shape formed inside the mouth area. Not exactly a triangle, it's sort of jaggedy. Okay, and then we've got off the side of the nose, some longer hairs that sort of curl up and out. And that's put in the edge of the mane now, because I haven't done that yet. So looking at the corner of the eye, if I come at an angle, what I'm doing is looking like that. And then we get this long piece of hair sort of works its way back towards the um, other section. Let's just measure out how far out we need to go before we hit that area. So we're about here. And we've got this sort of jaggedy line coming up. <clears throat> And then this comes all the way down till we get to the horizontal line. <clears throat> Continue the main cross till we're back over to this side. Like so, 
So again, it's this nice big sort of medieval ruffle around his neck. So this is the sort of darker blacker hairs goes out of the picture. Uh, we kind of find it again down in this left right hand corner with a little cut in of that hair. And then let's just find where his ear is. We've got a little bit of ear up here, so we need to put that in. <clears throat> so coming across on the gray patch, which is about there. We'll measure up to that point. <clears throat> about there, so it's a good guess. Let me get this sort of domed shape. Let's see how far out the dome shape goes. Not too far wrong. Let's measure it to the top. Which comes to about there. So it's actually quite a bit longer than I thought it was. So the dome shape comes down and then we get all this fur over the top that sort of conceals where the actual inner part of the ear is. So we don't really get to see that. So that's just the ear in there somewhere. Slightly darker in the center. And then through the front of the forehead, we've got this sort of almost dark streak of hair, that sort of crests inwards. <clears throat> so we'll try and put a bit of that in with a jaggedy line. Just so that when we come to paint it, we know roughly where that comes. That's going out on that side. A bit more of an indication of the fur coming down the forehead. Some very light patches out here of the, the lighter furs. Obviously, you don't want to bother putting all of those in. Just a little indication. Maybe a few little marks just to suggest that the hair curves out at that point and it curves up. It's not really a line here as such, it's just where the one area of fur is overlapping the other area. So let's just knock that line down a little bit. It was more of a indication of where these changes in surface come. In an actual fact, the hairs are actually going out, radiating out from the face. So it radiates out from here and then they get longer in the face down there. There you go, this all wavy thing going on through there. Um, there's a few whiskers and so on down the bottom. I think the outer part, of the, you can't really see it, but I'm gonna just suggest the outer part of the dark fur there. Um, okay, so I'm gonna give you a chance to do some of that while I just do a bit tidy up with the rubber. So I'm gonna actually try and take out um, some of these construction lines ready for um, when we come to paint it. You may get a little bit of this showing through and I will probably with mine because I had to press a bit harder for the, um, the camera so I hope it shows up. But you could theoretically when you put this in right at the very beginning put it in extremely lightly so you don't really 
get an impression of it at the end. But as I said at the beginning, I don't really mind, personally, I don't mind this in my paintings. I quite like to see some of the construction work within the, um, the finished piece. It just adds to the authenticity of it. So let's just try and take out some of that. All the way up. Maybe break these lines up a little bit. Let's clean that up. A little bit more in here. And again, if you don't really like to see your drawing through your watercolor, then you could, even at this stage, just sort of take your putty rubber and tap it over the lines just to knock them down a bit and make them less obvious. Um, just be careful that you don't rub your drawing out totally, otherwise you've spent all this time doing a nice drawing and then you can't actually see it when you come to paint it. So um, just be a little bit careful. Let's just take that line out, we don't need that one. Okay. Uh, right, I'm just going to stand back just to make sure it's all lining up correctly because I can't really see it very well sitting down. So the nose, to me, looking at it from a little bit of a distance, feels like it touched too high. I'm just going to check the measurement on it. Mm. Um, it does feel a bit high. It's making the muzzle feel a bit short. So I'm just going to knock this, bring this down a little bit, which will help to elongate the um the muzzle of touch from the pencil that is there we go i think we moved it up earlier and then now i'm moving it back down again so it's all good so let's just carve this in here so it sort of comes in down we've got the front of the front line that sort of comes in there triangle shape comes up uh, the center of the node which is off center it's not actually in the center we come down there up and then back down now I'm not even going to bother to try and put any loss rules within this shape. If you saw it in life, you would probably see some ovaled and you can just about make them out. When we come to paint it, we may play with that a touch, but I'm not gonna do that at the moment. I'm just gonna leave it as a shape, keep it simple. Um, can overcomplicate the drawing if you're not careful. And then when you come to paint it, you think, well, what the heck was that line for? And on. So let's keep it nice and simple. Uh, just tidy up some of these edges a little bit. We've actually got some whiskers, which may need to use some masking fluid on potentially um, to get those in. The they kind of make a whatever their paws or whatever they are. I'm not quite sure what you'd call it, but they make this sort of indentation within the fur, and the whiskers sort of come out of come out of that area. So let's just make a stab at where they come. 
Start the shape there, and a bit more of a shape down here. A little bit there. And then on the far side, they're actually a lot lighter on this side, so I'm not going to press quite so hard. Just a little indication of where the um, whiskers have come out from. Okay, uh, and then I think this needs a bit, a bit more round. It's got a little bit too wide there. Bring that in a little bit. It's a bit darker in the center as well. Okay, I think that will probably do for the um, for the drawing.